Hey folks, I'm Lucy at Ballyhoo Creations and I create dolls and teach people how to make them, often using an embroidery machine to automate the sewing for me. I'm trying something new in this video. I'm gonna show my process of how I design something. So as you watch, you might pick up tips about machine embroidery or doll making as you see me try to solve the problems that come up. I'm gonna show you the process with mistakes and everything. So this story actually begins over the holidays when I was one plushy short for all the kids who wanted one. That was my bad there. And so I made the kids an offer. I said, draw me a character and I'll try to make a doll out of your drawing. And uh, one of my nieces was like, that, 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 I want that. And the other one, and one of the nephews was like, no, he just wanted the gnome, like one of these gnomes with the big puffy nose. He wanted that, but the niece said, yes. She has a YouTube channel too. It's called Ava and Maddie the Fart. You heard me. That's a great channel name for two junior high girls. I'll link her channel in the description. So if you want her to give her a thumbs up, that'd be cool. But Maddie drew me this awesome creature. It's called a Gorgome Gorgi. His name is Marco. And she was very clear that it's colorful and has six toes. And she also wanted to point out the tail in the back there. So my challenge is turning this drawing into a plushie that I can send to her. So I left my camera running while I was trying to make this. Watch and see if I'm able to create this critter or not, and I'll tell you my thought process as we speed through the design and construction. To start out, I took a picture of her drawing and then I imported that into Procreate on my iPad. And that way I could draw over her drawing lines and then fill in the different areas with colors to see what I liked. And then I wrote notes about different parts of the design. There's more notes about different parts, like if I want to do it in the hoop, trying to figure out how to bring this together. I knew I wanted to machine embroider the face, so I mapped that out with notes on what areas would be applique versus embroidery stitches and what order they needed to be done in. And then I took those ideas over to Embird software. I have Embird Basic plus the digitizing tools, and that combo runs about $300 for the software, and that way I can um, create the embroidery files to make this face. I realize not everybody has the capability to digitize for the embroidery machine. This isn't really a tutorial video, it's more of a design along with me, watch what I do. So I didn't capture the whole process, I'm just showing what it looks like after all the work in Embird, and it's simulating the stitch out process here. You can leave a video comment if you're interested in seeing the whole process of how I digitize a face. I've finally got the software set up on my computer to do that. So then I transferred that design over to my embroidery machine and I'm gonna go to the work table and figure out what materials to use. She wanted it colorful and we had decided that like unicorn colors are the kind of colors she wanted. So I'm using some aqua and some pink. I've got this pink tank top here that's really stretchy. I've got some red fleece there got um, for the tail I've got this pink Mongolian fur and then for the base the aqua is a polar fleece and then I'm trying to find a red thread that goes with the, the red fleece there just trying to match up my thread colors that are going to coordinate with the fabrics. And here I'm just like, I have to program my machine of where to stop so that I can place fabric and things like that. Normally you would have instructions that tell you how to do that, but when you design it yourself, you're the one who has to figure out those instructions. So I'm writing down all my thread colors and where I need the machine to stop. And this will be done on the multi-needle, so you have to program it to stop where, uh, when you want it, otherwise it'll just go through the whole thing and it won't let you place fabric down. And then I put it on the machine and I let it go. I decided to use this white scuba fabric for the applique of the eyes and that actually turned out really great. Um, I had planned on using like a stretchy t-shirt fabric for the eyes, that's what I usually use, but I had this white scuba and it's a thick, like it's not plush, it's very smooth and silky, but it's thick, like has it, it feels like it has a thin layer of foam in between the two layers of the fabric, it's really cool. And when I use that for the eyes, they kind of puffed up, almost like a Muppet's eyes that uses ping pong balls. And I really like that effect. So I'm going to be using a lot more scuba with applique on plushies in the future because I loved how this turned out. And now I'll go ahead and show you something that didn't work out so well. I wanted the inside of the ears to have this long fur. And so doing this in the hoop where the seams are stitched in the hoop, I tried to tape down some of that fur 
and um, before I stitch the seam. So here I am just taping that fur in place so that when you turn it right side out, the fur would be the front of the ear and then the aqua polar fleece would be the back of the ear. And um, I'll show you how that ended up looking. So I put that on the machine and let the machine stitch the seams and then I cut it all out. And my scissors really struggled through all that fur and fleece there. It was really hard even for sharp scissors. And then when I turn it right side out, I didn't leave the hole big enough, so mistakes happen, and this happens to me a lot. I have to go back and fix stuff after I've designed it. Usually it takes two or three tries before it, I get it right. And go ahead and turn that right side out, and I kind of like the fluffy ears, but uh, it's, not, it's not quite what I wanted. It's too small, even though I made it in the 8 inch by 8 inch hoop, it's too small. I don't like how the ears turned out. And I do love those scuba lips and eyes though. I like the little heart cheeks. I like how that turned out, but the shape of it is just not right. So I went back to Embered and I digitized a second attempt. And luckily the second attempt actually goes much faster because I already had an idea of what I liked and didn't like. This time, instead of doing the entire body in the hoop, I'm only doing the face on the embroidery machine and still doing the applique with the eyes and lips, just showing an example of how that's gonna stitch out using the Embird simulator. And I decided that I would use the, the sewing machine to do the body, and that's what I ended up doing instead. And the ears would be detached instead of sewn in the hoop. So this is just the face now. And I knew that I wanted to have the little ball nose like on the gnomes. So just cutting out a little circle of the pink stretchy fabric. This is from a tank top from Walmart where they have these really stretchy camisoles and it works great for this. So I'm gonna stitch a running stitch by hand all the way around the circle and then pull that tight, put a little stuffing in and then stitch up the edge and that will be sewn onto the face later on. For this second attempt, I'm putting the ears separate in the hoop, so I went ahead and stitched those and turned those right side out. So those will be attached to the body later on, and there's the nose I already did, and also the little feet. Uh, my niece was very clear that her, she's calling this creature a Gorgom Gorgi, and that it has six toes. And when she told me that, I was like, oh great, because I already have a pattern with five toes, and this means I have to digitize one with six toes, but I did. And here I'm just cutting that out and I'll uh, turn those right side out with my hemostats. Again, this is not a tutorial, so I'm going to kind of blow through this. But the little tootsies there are turned right side out and then stuffed. And then those feet will also be attached to the creature later on. And I think I hand stitched those. The eyes were still appliqued with scuba because I really loved how that turned out. But I will say that the scuba is kind of hard to cut, especially when the fabric underneath is something fluffy like this polar fleece. My little scissors kept digging in. So there's the face finished. I'm just pulling away the topper that I used, the little fluffy lips there, my big fat head in the way. That happens a lot. So it's ready to be stitched into the body. And I took that over to my serger and I did a seam across the bottom and across the back there and cut that off and I'm gonna box the corners and that way this little bag will sit flat. It's a bag body is what I call these and took that to the serger, just clip those threads and then we just turn it right side out. That's my favorite part. I've already stitched it closed and I hand stitched the ears on and now I'm just placing like I want the nose there and I want to add the feet and the beard and I changed my mind on the beard. I Instead of going with the pink, I have this other fur that is the aqua color so I went ahead and switched that over to that beard instead. And this is after it was all stitched and glued. So what I ended up doing is that turquoise beard, I put a little bit of pink fur, I just glued a little spot in the middle on the beard and then glued little pieces of fur inside the ears and then rolled up some fur on and uh, stitched it into the top of the head with two different colors of fur there. And I, it turned out great. I love how it looks, but she was very clear that it has a tail. So I had to figure out how to attach the tail and I knew I wanted a wire in it. So I had to get experimental here. Since her drawing had some fur at the tip of the tail, I went ahead and took that pink fur and I just rolled it around the tip of the tail. And I just sewed that again on my serger, just a strip of fabric. And I'm using a glue gun to just glue that on. 
and I've got a piece of armature wire. This is the thin armature wire and I folded one end and taped it just to make sure it doesn't come out the end of the tail. And then for the other side, I coiled that up a few times into like a little loop. And this was the experimental part because I'm just sewing around kind of like in a star pattern to stitch that onto the back side of the creature. I'm sorry, the Gorgon Gorgi. And I wasn't sure if this was going to hold it in place. Um, I didn't think it was going to work, but after I stitched it around like twice, it, it actually did hold it on there well enough that you can bend the tail. There's my big fat head again. Hello. And then once that wire was stitched on, I just used the same needle and thread and stitched the, um, the turquoise fabric from the tail onto the body using a ladder stitch. And this is the final result sitting next to the drawing. So it's all finished and it's got the feet and it's with the six toes and it's got the little nose and it's got the fluffy ears and the fluffy little mohawk and the tail with the fluff on the end. The only thing I think I did not get right is the shape of it because hers looks more triangular and part of that's the beard so I tried to emulate the pointy you know bottom of the beard so it does kind of have that but it's not quite as fat and heart shaped as hers so eh, I, I wondered if maybe I should go back and do it again but I thought this is pretty cute so I'm gonna leave it at this and hopefully she will love it. That's the finished Gorb Gorm Gorgi. <laughs> I'll be sending it off to my niece Maddie pretty soon. Even though I sell machine embroidery designs in my shop at Ballyhoo Creations, this design won't be for sale because it's just for Maddie. But I am considering doing some plushy designs like maybe the facial features, different feet, different body styles that could be done with an embroidery machine, maybe a sewing machine, um, making sure that everything can be done on a smaller machine like the 4x4 hoops because I know a lot of people have those. So I'm just playing around with those ideas. I haven't really firmed anything up yet, but I like this so much that I think I want to build some more like this. I think it'd be really great if you could take somebody that you want to give a plushie to and have them choose the facial features and the body parts and the colors, maybe have them choose the fabrics with you. Kids love that. But you know, there's so many different ideas uh, trying to get those designs out there. So let me know if you like this video or if you have other plushie ideas you think I should develop into embroidery designs. I love hearing from you in the comments section. So as always, thanks for watching.